It has been said that there are more plant and animal species that have gone extinct than all the species that are alive today. This is actually a real shame, especially for the scientific community, who would have given up anything to see and study these creatures while they were alive. However, with recent technological advancements in genetics and cloning, bringing some of these extinct animals back to life seems more of a possibility now more than ever. Today we're going to be looking at 10 extinct animals that scientists want to bring back from extinction. Make sure you stay tuned for number one. I bet you'll definitely want to see one of these creatures alive in the future. Number 10. The Moa. There were a total of nine species of Moa, all of them found in New Zealand. They're large and flightless birds, easy to hunt, and a good source of meat. And that's why when the Polynesians occupied New Zealand in the 13th century, they were relentlessly hunted to extinction. As one of the hundreds of species whose extinction can be directly blamed on humans, they are a prime candidate for de-extinction. And now, after 700 years of being extinct, the mighty may again roam this earth. And it might happen sooner than you think. Very recently, scientists were successfully able to assemble the first nuclear genome of an extinct MOA species, that of the tiny bush MOA. At first, this doesn't exactly seem like that big of an accomplishment, as the genome is but a partial draft. But scientists working on the project say that this was no easy task and is already a defining moment in the project. With this success, they're pretty confident that the genomes of the remaining eight species of MOA will be assembled soon enough. After that, the reality of seeing these giant birds alive becomes so much closer. Number 9. The Pyrenean Ibex. The Pyrenean Ibex is a subspecies of the Spanish Ibex, and is one of the animal species that went extinct within the last 20 years. For more than 200 years, they were hunted for sport and for meat, until the last specimen died in the year 2000. Since then, attempts have been made to bring this species back from the dead. Technically, the Pyrenean Ibex was technically de-extincted back in 2006, but immediately went extinct again in just a few minutes. Using genetic material from the frozen skin of the last Ibex, they were able to successfully produce a clone by creating embryos and implanting them in the Spanish Ibexes. This clone, however, had a deformed respiratory system, hence it lived only a few minutes after birth. This event marked the first successful attempt at de-extinction by way of cloning. With this success, you might think that it's now going to be a breeze bringing back extinct animals, you know, just as long as scientists have some viable genetic material. However, this is so far from the truth that hurts. The success rate of cloning is extremely low. Out of the hundreds of embryos created and implanted into surrogates, only one made it to full term, and even this one had birth defects. Yet, despite the difficulties, scientists are confident that they will be able to bring back the Pyrenean Ebex from extinction. It's now only a matter of time and trial and error. Number 8. The Quagga. It's thought that the quagga became extinct due to overhunting in 1883, but in 1984, genealogy technology revealed that the quagga was actually a subspecies of the plain zebra. This meant that it had some of the same DNA. The two species share the same genotype, though their observable characteristics are different. The quagga project was started to try to recreate the quagga through artificial selection of plain zebras. The project has had some success. The first quagga-like zebra foal was born in January of 2005, and the fifth generation foal was born in December of 2013. Scientists hope continued selective breeding will lead to generations of plain zebras almost identical to the extinct quagga, which could then be released into the wild. Number 7. The Heath Hen. The Heath Hen was one of the first animal species that received a conscious effort from people regarding their conservation. These birds were extremely common in the northeastern U.S. and were likely eaten at the Pilgrims' first Thanksgiving dinner in 1621. Once inhabiting habitats from Maine to Carolinas, the heath hen was hunted aggressively for the next 300 years or so by 1870. The bird could only be found only on Martha's Vineyard. When this happened, local officials banned hunting and established a preserve to protect remaining habitats. Despite local conservation efforts, the last heath hens, whom the conservationist named Booming Ben, died in 1932. The wide availability of usable DNA from museum specimens makes the heath hen a prime de-extinction candidate, and in truth, we as humans owe it to the species. A conservation group founded by Stuart Brand and Ryan Phelan is interested in restoring the bird through genetic technology. According to Brand, the heath hen could well just be the gateway bird to be able to bring genetic rescue to a wide variety of endangered and extinct birds. So, here's hoping. Number 6. The Gastric Brooding Frog 
The gastric brooding frogs were a genus of ground-dwelling frogs native to Queensland and eastern Australia. The genus consisted of only two species, both of which became extinct in the mid-1980s. The frogs are known for their unique reproduction method. The mother would convert her stomach into a womb, swallow her eggs, refrain from eating during the six-week gestation period, and give birth through propulsive vomiting. Oh. This species is a prime candidate for de-extinction. Dubbed the Lazarus Project, named after a biblical character who was brought back to life, this was established with the sole purpose of bringing these frogs back from extinction. And in recent years, they've actually come a long way. In 2013, scientists at the University of New South Wales and University of Newcastle tried to clone the frog by implanting a cell nucleus from a dead gastric brooding frog into a live egg from another frog species. Professor Mike Archer hopes to continue using this method to make an embryo that will survive to the tadpole stage. Number 5. The Thylakine This marsupial, native to Australia and New Guinea, was a relative of kangaroos and koalas, but looked more like a wolf. It became extinct on the mainland 3,000 years ago, but survived on the southern island of Tasmania until human hunters supposedly trying to protect their livestock drove it to extinction in the early 20th century. The last known thylakine died in Hobart Zoo in 1936, but the species may have persisted into the wild to at least the 1940s. However, the species was declared extinct in 1982. In 2008, Dr. Andrew Pask, a researcher at the University of Melbourne, published a paper detailing how his team extracted DNA from a preserved thylakine and injected a portion of the COL2A1 gene, which regulates bone development. They did this into mouse embryos, which grew normally. This was the first time DNA from an extinct animal performed its intended function on a living animal. This experiment has renewed scientists' hopes of eventually restoring the thylakine from extinction. And in 2017, scientists were finally able to sequence the animal's entire genome, making the possibility of bringing the thylakine back from extinction even more closer to reality. Number 4. The Oroch Scientists are now working on what was believed to be the impossible. Bring back a huge ancient cow species called the Oroches. These roamed Europe for a few thousand of years until the last one died in the Jacktarel Forest in Poland in 1627. They're approximately 7 feet tall and weigh around 1,000 kilograms. The efforts to bring back the Oroch have been in the works since 2009. European science teams, along with two programs, are attempting to revive a version of them through breeding. One of them is Operation Taurus. The program has selectively bred 300 calves with Oroch's DNA through something called backbreeding. They selected breeds of cattle which have certain Oroch characteristics, and each generation of calves may get closer to the original Oroch's in appearance, behavior, and genetic makeup. Another one is the Taurus Project over in Portugal, which has also been crossbreeding species in an attempt to recreate the species. These animals were frequently featured in the cave paintings of our ancestors. With the two projects to bring back the Oroch going on simultaneously, it might only just be a matter of time before modern-day painters create portraits of these amazing animals. Number 3. The Dodo The Dodo is perhaps the most famous extinct animal. It evolved without any natural predators, but the humans that arrived on their home island, Maridius, took advantage of this and killed them. Mainly for food. Maybe sometimes for entertainment. And after the introduction of non-endemic species into the Dodo's habitat, the small flightless bird was doomed from the get-go. Naturally, this bird is a prime candidate for de-extinction, but it looked to be impossible for many years since no viable genetic material could be found. All that changed in 2007, though. In that year, scientists were able to unearth the best preserved dodo skeleton ever found. And they hoped that this excellent specimen still holds genetic material other scientists can still work on. And they were right. In 2016, Beth Shapiro, an evolutionary biologist at the University of California, Santa Cruz, announced that the Plant and Animal Genomes XXIV conference of the whole genome of the extinct dodo bird had been sequenced. This achievement made dodo de-extinction possible. Now it's time for the day's best pick. In the day's pick, we'll be looking at the de-extinction possibility of one of the fiercest animals ever to roam the Earth. Which brings up the question, should we even try and make the attempt? I think Jurassic Park is the good answer of no. Number 2. The Saber-Toothed Tiger Of all the animals on this list, Smilodon, also known as the Saber-Toothed Tiger, may be the longest shot for de-extinction. 
Now, on the plus side, the saber-toothed tiger is certainly the most attractive candidate. Imagine the bidding war among zoos and nature preserves for the honor and, of course, the profit of hosting a roaring, pouncing canine wielding family of Smilodons. On the minus side, it's not at all clear if sufficient Smilodon DNA can be recovered to make de-extinction a technical possibility. And it's not as if the saber-toothed tiger has any especially close living relatives. And then there's the matter of what a successful reinduction of the saber-toothed tiger would mean for the defenseless prey animals of the Serengeti. And not to mention the already endangered big cats with which Smilodon would be in direct competition with, which I bet you anything it would win against. This dilemma involving the possibility of de-extincted animals pushing current species to extinction is the main argument of people against the extinction. And I'd be lying if I didn't say they had a point. How about you, where do you stand on this issue? Let us know in the comment section down below. Side Jurassic Park is a good source. I saved the best for last, but first, I have a quick challenge that takes only 5 seconds to complete. If you can leave a like and subscribe within the next 5 seconds, you'll get 10 years of amazing luck. Just try it, it really works. Number 1. The Woolly Mammoth these Ice Age herbivores, whose closest living relatives are the Asian elephant, lived on several northern continents and had a thick furry coat that protected against the extraordinary cold. These shaggy massive animals went extinct about 4,000 years ago, but they've always been in the middle of de-extinction discussions. Given the frequency with which individuals are found encased in permafrost, you'd think it would be a snap to recover the intact genome of a woolly mammoth and clone this huge elephant back into existence. Well, think again. Viable mammoth DNA has proved surprisingly elusive, and there's also the matter of finding a suitable host to carry an engineered embryo. The most likely candidate would be a female African elephant. Perhaps most important, the woolly mammoth is by far the largest terrestrial candidate for de-extinction. Even a small herd would require a huge amount of territory and might wind up knocking other plant eaters right out of the food chain. Which extinct animal would you like to see brought back to life? Let us know in the comment section down below. Want to watch more videos about amazing animals, extinct or otherwise? Click on any of the videos you see on the screen. As always, thanks for watching everybody, and I will see you next time. Later everybody.